This is KGW News at Sunrise. We do have control and there are things we can all do um, to slow the spread of this virus uh, and, and keep each other safe. That is the call to action for all of us as we head into the 4th of July weekend. And yet again, Oregon breaks another coronavirus record with 375 cases in one day. Yeah, and cases also surging in Washington. And now the governor is putting some new rules in place. Businesses won't be allowed to serve people without masks or they could be fined. Music. And while in-person concerts and performances may be on hold, some high schoolers in Beaverton have a new way to showcase their talents. Looking forward to that story. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Drew and Nina are off today. So we have Miss Christine Pitawanich back with us on Sunrise. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. And Brenda, you know, before this all started, I was like, I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> it was so great to be back. And of course, as we head into 4th of July, everyone talking about the weather rod. Yeah, good morning. Holiday today and of course the 4th of July tomorrow and the weather forecast uh, still looks fantastic. Let's get you going out the door this morning. We're at 56 degrees. Some of you are closer to 50. It's actually kind of cool outside. We have partly to mostly cloudy skies. This will go on generally to be a partly cloudy day with uh, the warmest temperatures of the week so far. I have Portland at 67 at lunchtime and then a high today of 76 degrees. We'll have the seven day forecast. It still looks good for the weekend. That's coming up. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Rod. And you know what? This morning, so many of us are getting ready for the 4th of July weekend. But keep in mind, Oregon is facing an alarming number of coronavirus cases. In fact, yesterday, the set the state rather set a new single day record with 375 new cases. The previous record was 281. That was on Wednesday. This graph right here tracks the daily number of new cases. You can see the consistent rise toward the end. And health officials tell us cases are rising even though testing is down. Both Oregon and Washington say cases are rising among people who don't even think they're vulnerable, especially young people. Galen Etlin looked into the data showing who's getting sick. Oregon's positive testing rate is up to 4.2 percent compared to 3.7 the week before. Testing has also decreased about 11 percent in that time. Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines said this. Testing capacity uh, remains uh, finite and is, uh, it, uh, if anything, becoming strained. Uh, we are focusing on finding cases and slowing, slowing the spread of the disease. Statewide, 75 percent of those cases are among people under 50. I just think that we went from being very isolated to really reconnecting with lots of folks at too fast of a pace. And we're really trying to urge people to back off on that. Kids and teens remain on the lower end of cases and often do not get as sick. But some outbreaks like this one at a kinder care facility in Lake Oswego raise concerns. Multnomah County says it has had three smaller clusters connected to child care. But generally, most new cases are from social groups, not larger outbreaks. That's likely because of better weather, reopening, and people meeting beyond their household family members. To push what we know works, which is the face covering, the physical distancing, getting people outside and limiting social contact. To reconsider your 4th of July plans, have that smaller gathering. Oregon State Health Officer Dr. Dean Seidlinger says we could soon reach 900 new cases and 27 people going to the hospital per day. Health officials say prevention is in everyone's hands. If we all do this, um, it could it could really make a difference. People of color are still disproportionately impacted with a few hundred more cases reported in Multnomah County each week compared to white people. And Washington state reports similar problems with death rates two to three times higher for people of color, especially for immigrants and refugees with less access to the health system. Since May, Hispanic people have accounted for 58 percent of cases with a known race, but make up only 13 percent of Washington's population. People under 35 make up about half of Washington's cases. Both states now have mask requirements, and the message is clear. We have many, many more months to go, and it's probably not going to be a linear process because, we, again, we, as you all well know, we're learning and responding at the same time. Galen Etlin. KGW News. We've got one chance to beat this virus. It's right now. 
And we got one way to beat this virus, and that's to mask up. If we mask up, we'll eventually open up and we'll save lives in this state. A governor of Washington, Jay Inslee, not mincing words this morning when it comes to face masks. And starting Tuesday, the state will crack down on people who aren't wearing one. Bryant Clerkley is joining us live this morning with more on Washington's response to COVID-19. Bryant, good morning. Good morning, Brenda. That is true. Governor Inslee made it mandatory for people to wear masks inside public places just last week, and now businesses can be fined if they don't enforce this. Now, there is a surge of cases in Washington, and it broke its record for cases in a single day with 716 new infections reported just yesterday. In total, more than 34,000 people in Washington have have tested positive and 1300 people have died. Now, Governor Inslee says in places where more people wear masks, the number goes down. Some evidence now that this may have already been helping us in Yakima, for instance, where we've increased the mask usage and we think there's some evidence that we may have started to slow down the spread of the virus. Now, with all now in addition to the mask mandate governor Inslee is also putting all reopenings on hold brenda all right thank you bryant right now we want to turn to a new development on the use of force by police at protests a judge has granted a temporary restraining order blocking officers from arresting or using force against journalists and legal observers at portland demonstrations the ACLU recently filed a lawsuit on behalf of several journalists who say officers assaulted or harassed them while they were covering the protests. The ACLU calls this decision a needed shield for the press. The historic elk statue in downtown Portland is gone. City crews removed it yesterday after it became the focal point for protests against police brutality. The statue sits outside the Justice Center at 3rd and Main, and as we reported yesterday, protesters set it on fire during Wednesday night's demonstration. City officials say the base of the statue was badly damaged and couldn't support it safely. Now to a major political update from Oregon City. Commissioners there issued a vote of no confidence for their mayor, Dan Holliday. People are criticizing him for downplaying police brutality against black people. In April, he also threatened to defy Governor Brown's stay at home order and reopen all city businesses. That prompted a warning from Oregon's Attorney General. Holliday is also facing several lawsuits related to his business dealings and he's facing a recall. This morning, police are looking for the driver responsible for a hit and run crash in Milwaukee that killed a two year old. It happened on Southeast Wichita Avenue. It's a residential street just south of Johnson Creek Boulevard yesterday around noon. The driver left the scene and originally police were looking for a white pickup, but now say they no longer believe that truck was involved. If you know anything about what happened or if you might have any surveillance video, call Milwaukee police. Now to Hillsdale, where a group of food cart owners hope you can help them find the person who vandalized their carts. They say on Wednesday night, someone broke into one cart and damaged several others. It happened at the Hillsdale Food Park pod on Capitol Highway. The owner of one cart says the vandal couldn't break in, but shut off his breakers, which spoiled hundreds of dollars of food. I think the part that's going to hurt us the most is just not being able to get back to work. We're going to hopefully try to get back to work on the 4th of July. And um, with the with the food prep as it is, we're going to try to make deals on um, burgers and hot dogs to try to get people out there. The food cart that was broken into had several hundred dollars stolen. And you know, every 4th of July, we hear it all the time. Be careful, right, when it comes to fireworks. But fire officials want people to be even more cautious this year. Most big shows are canceled, and state leaders are asking all of us to stay local and in small gatherings. Fire officials worry more people will be lighting off their own fireworks, and they're also concerned that some people will go to Vancouver to buy fireworks that are illegal in Oregon. The combination of those two things worry us. Um, 
we not only have a fire threat to worry about, but we've got veterans that oftentimes feel trapped in their own homes. And when it comes down to it, only buy legal fireworks, of course, set them off in open areas away from anything that could catch fire. And just remember, let those used fireworks maybe sit in some water overnight before you toss them in the trash. You don't want to start an unintended fire. Yeah, all good stuff to keep in mind as we head into the holiday weekend. But Rod, is the fourth going to be looking nice? I mean, you've been saying it is going to be, so I'm hoping it's the same. Yeah. Yes, no changes really significantly to our holiday weekend. It's still going to be very pleasant. And we're fortunate, you know, we don't have any wildfire, large wildfires in our state. Overall, the fire danger is relatively low for this time of the year. Of course, as Christine mentioned, that doesn't mean you should just go out and, you know, shoot anywhere and everywhere. You still need to use caution. Here's our forecast. Uh, Friday, 76 degrees. Today, very pleasant. Would be the warmest day of the week so far, by the way. Tomorrow, I have lowered it from 80 to 77, but it's still a mostly sunny day, and I still think we could hit 80 degrees on Sunday. So, thumbs up to a nice holiday weekend uh, across our entire region. All right, we do have mostly cloudy skies over the city at this hour. The view looking south down the uh, Willamette from the uh, Wells Fargo building, 56 degrees out of PDX this morning, and it is relatively cool. Here are the uh, early morning numbers, 53 up in Scappoose, Camas is at 49, so is Happy Valley up in Battleground, it's 50 degrees. Again, it's partly to mostly cloudy across the region right now. We are completely dry, 49 out in Dallas, Salem, good morning, you're in the mid-50s. Forecast numbers for today. Everybody's easily up into the 70s. We think mid-70s on average with some warmer pockets. Partly to mostly sunny in Salem and Corvallis and early cloudiness and then a partly cloudy day with temperatures in the 70s from Vancouver up in through uh, Kelso Longview area. I have put back in the forecast. I had it. I took it out. I put it back in. I'm talking about the chance for showers next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But keep in mind, this time of the year, a lot of these shower chances simply fall apart or fizzle out. So we'll see. All right, back to you. All right, we won't hold you to it, at least not yet. Christine, coming up after the break, I know you have our morning rush headlines. What's the talker today? Yeah, the Washington Redskins are actually under a lot of pressure from investors to change the team name. And it, now Nike is actually pulling all Redskins apparel from its website, Brenda. Plus, the show must go on. A group of Beaverton teens are sharing their musical talents just virtually, and you'll be able to watch their performances starting tomorrow.